President Putin accuses the West of a policy of blackmail, saying both Russia and the US know who really hit the UN aid convoy in Syria last month. Stricken residents in the Syrian city of Aleppo, meantime, tell RT how terrorists prevent them from escaping the conflict zone there. We get reaction to that uh, from the US State Department. I'm not going to get into a debate about who runs what neighborhood in Aleppo with you. And coming up, two French police are at loggerheads right now with the government over how best to tackle neighborhood no-go zones after last weekend's vicious attack against officers. Live from RTHQ, where it's just turned 5 p.m. here in Moscow now. Kevin Owen with you this hour. Delighted you've chosen to watch us wherever you are around the world. Our top story then, President Putin has been clarifying Russia's position over the last couple of hours on the Syrian conflict to foreign journalists at an international investment forum in Moscow today. Our correspondent Ilya Petrenko has been listening in as well. Some interesting lines came out earlier. The president took questions for about an hour, didn't he? What was said? Kevin, hi again. When, well, as you were saying, Vladimir Putin was talking at an investment forum, and the moderator even had to point that out to the audience at the Q&A session because instead of economics, the issue of Syria was quickly brought up, and uh, the Russian president addressed uh, the issue of Russia widely being accused in the West for the collapse of the peace process in Syria. And in particular, he mentioned the devastation of a UN humanitarian convoy in Aleppo in September. Russia is now being blamed in all crimes without any proof. Let's just take, for example, the attack on the humanitarian aid convoy. We know who hit it. It was one of the terror organizations on the ground. And we clearly know that the Americans are aware of this as well. But they prefer blaming Russia without proof. That's clearly not what can help the situation. This manner of acting at an international level is called pressuring and blackmailing. But with Russia, that has never worked and never will work. Russia's President Vladimir Putin also went on to explain Russia's veto at the UN Security Council against the French resolution. He said that when the foreign ministers of Russia and France met last week, certain terms of the French resolution were discussed and also it was meant to consider uh, Moscow's amendments to it. Well, uh, the Russian president pointed out that instead Mr. Arrow uh, went straight to Washington after that to talk uh, to John Kerry and uh, when they both spoke, accusations against Russia uh, were thrown out again. And also, uh, the resolution that was put forward at the UN Security Council turned out to be completely different, where uh, essentially everything was blamed on Assad and the Russian army as well. Vladimir Putin believes that it was something that was done on purpose. He called it a blackmail campaign on the highest level by Western officials who, according to Vladimir Putin, by doing so, were only deceiving their own people. Elliot, thanks for the update there from central Moscow and what uh, President Putin has said earlier on today. Meantime, the U.S. State Department has responded to an RT report documenting how terrorists in eastern Aleppo are preventing the civilian population from leaving. We're going to hear Washington's view in a moment about that, but first is a quick reminder of what we found. Our news crew managed to film the only flags that can be seen flying over the east of the city. As you can see yourself, one of them appears to belong to Jabhat al-Nusrat, the other to ISIL. Although Islamic State is not known to be present there, it does seem its sympathizers at least are. On top of that, RT spoke to many locals who claim they live in constant threat of a terrorist sniper fire. Nowadays, uh, people there, all of them, they are a, a big jail. Uh, these tourist people do not allow anybody to come here because they think this is a, a card to play with the government. Some people do manage to escape, but rebel snipers shoot at them when they see them. They don't allow civilians to leave. Getting around for us is very hard because we have to use alleys, side streets and holes in walls. It's very sad. We can't use the streets. We can't even send kids to school. I'm always scared of shells. They destroyed a house there, but we hid in the basement. 
A correspondent in Washington went to the U.S. State Department to ask whether it still believes there are any so-called moderate rebels in Syria's most troubled city. Our correspondent reporting from Western Aleppo interviewed uh, locals who say fighters in the rebel-held east deliberately fire at civilians who are trying to leave. Aren't these people effectively held in Aleppo, in eastern Aleppo? I, I can't confirm that report. You know, I don't get into battlefield reports. I'm not going to do that. Um, what, what, is in, what is without dispute is that the siege of Aleppo continues, as I was mentioning earlier. Um, and, uh, and, you know, your question about being held hostage, there, there, there should be, you know, and I've seen, you know, reports that they're allowed to leave. They shouldn't have to leave. And they shouldn't be being bombed by their own government and by the Russian military. And that's what needs to stop. The U.N. Syria envoy, Stefan de Mistura, had earlier called on al-Nusra to leave eastern Aleppo, saying they're, quote, deciding the destiny of 270,000 civilians. For many months, the rebels in eastern Aleppo had been either unable or unwilling to kick out al-Nusra. Instead, some of the groups became so intertwined with the terrorists that efforts to separate them have failed. Eastern Aleppo is, is run by al-Qaeda militarily. How do you imagine people living peacefully under al-Qaeda? I think, uh, first of all, I'm not, I'm not going to get into a debate about who runs what neighborhood in Aleppo with you. Uh, we've been clear. Uh, and so has 65 other nations have been clear uh, that the threat of terrorism in Syria is significant, uh, pre predominantly uh, from Daesh and from al-Nusra. And that's why the coalition will continue operations across multiple lines of effort, not just military, uh, to uh, degrade and defeat, particularly uh, Daesh inside Syria. Not clear if U.S. officials have a clear picture of what exactly al-Nusra controls in eastern Aleppo. And there's an impression that they don't want to get into that, at least now. Washington wants to stop the operations by Syrian and Russian militaries in eastern Aleppo. But what instead? Is it the U.S. strategy just to let al-Qaeda run that place? Eastern I'm not Aleppo. even going to dignify that question with an answer. I'm just not even going to dignify it. But someone who is waiting to talk to us is Mary Dajewski, writer and broadcaster who's written in Britain's Guardian newspaper, indeed only today about the dwindling diplomacy over Syria, she sees it. Hi, Mary. Thanks for making the time to be with us. We Hi. know you're busy. Um, before we talk about that, uh, that more generally, let's talk about just briefly what President Putin had to say in the last hour or so. Uh, that the U.S., he said, is fully aware that that U.N. humanitarian convoy in Aleppo was hit by terrorists or, or, or sympathizers, yet it still continues to, to, to blame uh, Russia. Do you think we'll get any more response from the uh, U.S. about that or not? I think it's very hard to uh, conceive of them um, dignifying it with a response mm. because their line has been so harsh until now, um, blaming the Russians. Of course, there have been some rather weasel words along the way. You know, nobody has ever to my knowledge, actually said it was definitely, definitely the Russians. Mm -hmm. It's always been, oh, it's widely accepted that, or all the evidence points to, or all these sort of little words in between. Mm -hmm. um, but I doubt whether even this very direct, very straightforward um, phrasing by President Putin today mm -hmm. is going to elicit any further um, comment from the Americans. Uh, if Washington does know, though, who's to blame for the attack, what the, why aren't they coming out with it? Just to set the record straight, if they've got evidence it was Russia, put it out there. There's very little Russia can do if there's hard evidence saying it was them somehow. Why are they doing it? Well, I think that um, in some ways it suited everybody for this to be seen as um, a little bit um, mysterious and for the blame to be to be muddied from the very beginning because maybe the people on the ground and the people responsible for the convoy the presumed recipients of the convoy didn't actually know who was responsible now given all the surveillance technology that there must be over Syria at the moment on both sides, from the Russian side, from the American side, um, it's 
quite hard to believe that there wasn't very specific knowledge of who did it, which I think is one of the reasons maybe why the United States was, why, why their version was believed, even though it was hedged about with, the, with these weasel words, as I say. Um, but I think that at least at the time, there was one very compelling reason why um, the Americans and the British and others um, preferred to see Russia's hand behind it. Um, and this was the fact that barely 24 hours before, um, the Americans, helped by the British, had inflicted an, air, uh, an airstrike on Syrian government troops, which had killed 62 of them. Mm. Now, this was very quickly, the Americans admitted that this had been a mistake, which, of course, the Syrian government in particular found very hard to believe. But ever since then, it's been the attack on the convoy that has been blamed by almost everybody yeah. um, on the non-Russian, non-Syrian government side for breaking that crucial ceasefire. Not the fact that there was this mistaken or otherwise um, attack on the Syrian government troops. Mm, interesting. Our, our correspondent's also been reporting, it's our headline, um, daily from Aleppo, and found out, as we've been saying, that uh, terror groups are controlling the East. We're seeing Al Nusra flags, even a, an ISIL flag, although they're not generally believed to be there, but it looks like some of their sympathizers at least are. And the top line of the story being that they're preventing civilians from fleeing. But yet again, we're still hearing America talking about the so-called moderate rebels ad finitum, ad finitum, it goes on and on and on. Um, uh, when are they going to accept that maybe these moderate rebels are not as moderate as they are being painted to be, we ask again? Well, I think that's one, but that, that's one part of the picture. Um, a change which I've maybe detected in the last few days, maybe just in the last week, is that certainly British reporting has tended to give the impression that Aleppo is a single city and that the airstrikes on Aleppo are on the whole city and they're all inflicted by the Syrian government backed by the Russians or by the Russians themselves. Mm. Now, just in the past week, Week, it seems to me, at least this is my impression, um, the reporting in Britain has become a little bit more sophisticated in that it's now recognised um, in the reporting that Syria is a divided city and that there is eastern Aleppo and there's western Aleppo and that these two territories are in different people's hands. Now, you know, to my mind, that at least is slight progress. Mm. Small steps may be. Mary Jeffsky, thanks for coming on the programme right on broadcast there. Thank you.